been a pretty good year so far for racing games, with titles like Forza 7, Wreckfest, Onrush, and F1 2018 keeping armchair racers of all types busy, and Forza Horizon on the, well, you know, and right now, or rather recently, since it was released on 9-11, another game is looking to distract you from real-life tuning and racing, only it's been developed by Team 6, a studio that doesn't really have a- actually, let's be honest, pretty much every game they've made has been trash. I mean, thankfully, Super Street the game isn't as bad as Flat Out 3, but it ain't the next big arcade racer for sure. The premise of the game is similar to that of 2004's Need for Speed Underground in that you have a completely stock car and are looking to race and modify it to ultimately get noticed as one of the best racers on the street or whatever. It's not really that clear, actually, as Super Street has no narrative outside of snippets of text when you hit reputation point milestones. In addition, despite knowing the names of your various opponents and races, there aren't any personalities attached to them, you know, aside from how they've modified their cars. It's a bit disappointing, considering even with Need for Speed Payback somewhat lackluster plot, there were still folks who could be considered antagonists. It's really good to have a hate magnet in a game focusing on street racing, you know. Of course, there are plenty of people who don't care for crazy things like context keeping them out of the action, so if they decided to pony up $50 for… this? That's one less thing they have to worry about. You're given the choice of playing or skipping the tutorial, after which you're given a bigger choice regarding your project car, since it's the only one you'll use throughout your career. None of the cars are licensed, but they do bear a striking resemblance to real-world vehicles, which makes that sting hurt just a bit less, the other being that the hoop that you choose is free. After deciding what you want to purchase with your meager starting funds, it's off to the events, of which there are 15 in total, with 5 races in each to complete. And those races are broken down into 6 categories, most of which will devolve into chaos, one seemingly designed specifically for that. Circuits are vanilla races, eliminator races are circuits where the last place driver is knocked out after a set period, time trials are your typical race against the clock, arcade races are time trials where the checkpoints grant time extensions, joy rides have you destroying environmental objects for points, sprints are mad dashes to disparate checkpoints located throughout the course, and duels are races around short figure 8 courses. There's an attempt to have a good mixture of these race types between the major events, but there's a point in the middle of the campaign where circuit races don't show up for like two whole events, and I don't know about you, but I don't think that's very balanced. Most of your races are against the clock, making this more of a track day simulator than anything, if you can even call it that. But maybe it's better to race alone after all. At least your car will have an easier time staying in one piece that way. The actual moment-to-moment -moment heats are an exercise in frustration, with AI racers going flat out at all times, banging into each other more often than your typical online Forza player. They also drive like they're using a controller with the D-pad, as every steering input from them results in these huge swerves to the left or right, meaning getting near them is foolish if you're trying to race cleanly. Of course, AI that aggressive does crash a lot, making it easy to take first place and gain a decent, or huge, lead with enough patience. And that's good, because if you don't, and the first place car pulls away, the lack of catch up means the best you're getting is second place. That's only if you can figure out the game's driving controls to do well. I mean, it's a racing game, so the basics are apparent, but like I said, the driving here ain't that great. Some cars are better than others, but there's a heavy emphasis on understeer, especially with most of the cars built for the sponsor races, and this is even at speeds considered low for an arcade game. Luckily, your handbrake will- Okay, I'm joking. A little. The handbrake in its current form doesn't really work as you would expect, being more like a modifier for the throttle than a 100% yank, and I can't say I like it. In the heat of things, it's really awkward to switch to holding the B or circle button and executing your drift with the accelerator, though I do understand the thought behind the scheme. The process is so touchy though, and it's really easy to spin out or simply not drift at all, again especially with the sponsor cars. But Kanji, you hypothetically say, you could just slow down and take the corner slower. I mean, sure, you can try, but the brakes, even when upgraded, are pretty weak, and don't help when turning at all. And you can consider that second statement to be an attempt at realism, since high-speed cornering and braking don't really mix, but that doesn't explain your brakes' ability to correct oversteer. Very useful when you need it, but not really good design. I'd be remiss if I forgot to mention the AI car's uncanny ability to power through corners at speed, with boost, you're gonna wanna go fast at all times. So, the campaign is short, the AI is stupid, and cheats to stay competitive without a catch-up mechanic, the driving ain't great, 
and there are not licensed cars. What exactly is good about this game that makes it worth 50 US dollars? I bet you thought I was going to say the customization, didn't you? Let's talk about that, because it is good on the surface. You can upgrade most of the parts, from the aforementioned brakes to the clutch and ECU, to the fuel injection, to most of the body panels. You can even perform engine swaps and have a hatchback with a W12, what the fuck? And all the components, with the exception of those engines, are licensed tuning parts, giving everything a nice authentic feel. At least until you realize that none of the components installed can be tuned, all the parts in each class provide the same statistical boot despite different prices, and even the rubber you buy doesn't help in making you stop. There's a grip stat. It's right there. I don't know what it's for though. Just like racing, which is what I did with my obvious skyline here, the mods present in this game are shallow. At least you can explode the model here in the garage to see all your cool shit. I wish you could explode these models because they look disgusting. And they also do nothing but stand around and look pretty. Though they are supposed to provide stat boosts. It's probably a good idea for Team 6 to better highlight exactly what they improve in an update since they seem committed to improving many of the things I've already complained about, none of which includes the presentation which is, well, mediocre to be nice. The best thing about the visuals is the damage model, where parts crumple and smash off when you strike other cars or barriers. Its presence in this extreme of fashion is the likely reason why there are no licensed cars, but that's just a guess. My problem with the model is the car's durability is like that of paper, and just a tap from another car from the side at the same speed as you can rip your door right off. The car models themselves are fine though, I mean, we're at a point graphically where it's not a crazy prospect to make models with doors open and you can see the interior. What really makes the visuals of a racing game shine is the lighting engine, and it unfortunately appears to be the standard Unreal Engine 4 color grading and tone mapping here, so don't expect to set a course of competition levels of quality. The different environments are, they exist, there's not a whole lot of life to them, and that again has to do with the color grade present, so PC players will be able to fix that with shader tweaks, but console folks are SOL here. The engine sounds are all different, but all the player cars start with the exact same engine, and basically end with that exact same W12 if you're smart, so you'll be hearing the same exhaust notes and rumbles every time you play. Oh, and those exhaust notes sound like someone smacking an aluminum can, and the tire squeal is more like an engineered frequency line than you actually leaving the pavement a rubber present. Sounds are nice when going through tunnels though. The music is okay, but there are only a couple of songs to stand out from the soundtrack, with the rest being forgettable. No licensed tracks are present, and most people will probably want to turn it down a tad. I would talk about the online, but I couldn't initially get it to work on the PC version, so I stopped bothering since, with all I've said, would you really want to play this online instead of something like Payback or Horizon 4? Other nitpicks include not being able to change game settings in the main menu, not being able to change controls at all, my G27 failing to exhibit force feedback because the devs only cared about Thrustmaster wheels, the lack of an option to restart a career prior to completing the current one, the UI being pretty boring to look at, the constant UE4 fatal error crashes when loading or restarting races, among other things I don't care to talk about anymore because this review is already too damn long and I could have just told you not to buy the game. Straight up. Seriously, Super Street the Game is a soup sandwich that shouldn't bear the name of the eponymous rag whose name is running through the mud here. It looks and controls funky, the physics are ridiculous, the AI is dumb as a sack of bricks, your car and mod choices are superficial, and there really aren't any redeeming factors other than being able to slap the dumbest dance on a car without having to worry about paying for the damage it ultimately causes. And unless a cracker gives enough of a crap to extract a single pack file that contains this entire game on PC, don't expect a modding scene either. I wanted to like this, but it's everything I expected out of the title and more, so for $50, it's a no-go. It doesn't hold a candle to the older arcade racers it attempts to harken back to, and in my opinion, this game is as bad as that stupid pose the magazine tried to make cool. 